Good evening, Wilderness, and everyone else that's joining us this evening. A uh, special shout out to LAB South Center. Um, it's good to have you with us um, for our midweek devotion. So, this evening we are going to be uh, reading through and talking through Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 19. So, um, <clears throat> as many of you know, um, some of my favorite verses come from this chapter in Romans. Um, at the you know the the end of the the chapter really sums up uh, a really great uh, reminder to us that uh, there is nothing at all that can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Um, that you know, not height nor depth nor angels nor demons uh, nor anything else in all of creation. And uh, that's a, a, a reminder that I hold on to, in, in, especially in times like this, when it seems like you know, there are a lot of things that are trying to separate us from one another. Uh, and yet, we are reminded that uh, we, we cannot be separated from our brother Jesus. Uh, and, and if we can't be separated from him, then through him, uh, just like our, our gospel reading last Sunday, um, just as as Christ and the Father are one, so we are one, uh, united through that faith in Christ. Um, so you know, no matter the the distance, no matter the obstacles that we face, uh, no matter the the pandemics that that plague us, um, no matter any of that, uh, we are we are united, and we are able to grow in faith uh, and share that faith with others um, even in these times uh, maybe especially in these times you know when when we really have to we're forced to kind of sit back and reflect on you know the all the intricacies of our lives you know we start to to notice some things that aren't quite as important and that some things that um, are important that maybe we want to dedicate more time to. So, um, it's a great time for <clears throat> self-reflection. Um, just want to also uplift, I know that you know, with the uh, tribal offices opening up uh, yesterday, um, there's a lot of concern and, and fear and uh, a lot of mixed emotions. You know, there's there's joy to be able to uh, to head back into the office for some, and uh, fear of heading back into the office for others. Um, there's you know, frustration of uh, I know a lot of folks have struggled with trying to get unemployment um, just because of the the mass volume of folks calling in and um, and businesses having been closed. Um, weren't able to, to verify stuff, uh, all those things. Uh, so uh, I understand that this is really a, a time of a lot of uh, mixed and very strong emotions, um, concerns and joys and everything. So uh, I want to uplift that, acknowledge that. Uh, I invite you to share your, your joys and your concerns, um, your, your highs and lows as we... Um, with our faith family fun nights always did uh we would we would share the highs and lows so um if you are watching this with others around you i encourage you to to maybe pause me <clears throat> and and go ahead and do that share your highs and lows uh and if you are alone or don't want to share with you know the the people around you um or if you're like me and you've got a, a furry beast uh of a companion that uh, maybe uh, you'd like to, to share with someone else, or even if you're surrounded by others and you still want to share, I invite you to, to do that. Um, comment below, uh, uplift. You know, what are the what are some of the things that you know that have have given you hope today, and what are some of the things that uh, bring you concern um, or that are weighing you down today? So um, always a good practice. So. Uh, invite you to do that now. Um, I'll pause. Okay. 
So with that, um, just know that I am praying for you every day. Um, set it to aside time um, to do that every morning. Um, <laughs> inspired by Martin Luther's uh, quote of, uh, there are so many things to do today that I shall dedicate the first three hours uh, to um, studying scripture and prayer. Uh, so uh, I try to do that as much as possible. Obviously, if there are meetings at 7 in the morning, um, <laughs> I'm not the kind of person that would be very good at studying scripture and praying at 4 in the morning because um, I'd probably just gotten to bed three hours before or four hours before. Um, but I do try to set aside time every single day um, for that. So please know that I'm lifting you up in, in my personal prayers. Uh, and if there are prayer concerns, uh, please don't hesitate. Uh, call, text, Facebook message, send me a letter, um, knock on my door, um, you know, whatever. Um, whatever works for you. Uh, I, would, I would love to hear from you and uh, add any specific prayers that I can. So with that, we will turn to Romans chapter 8. I invite you to follow along uh, in your own Bibles, or if you want, uh, I'll have the, the words on the screen for you as well. Life in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For if you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. All right, here ends our reading for this evening. So, what a great reminder to us, uh, especially those last two verses. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing 
with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. What an awesome reminder for us that all that we are going through now, all the, the fears, the concerns, uh, the, the heartbreak, the, the loss and the struggles, all of that which is very real, um, there's still nothing compared to what awaits us in God's kingdom. That, um, you know, when when we do get to that point, you know, it will it will just seem like nothing. It will be so ins insignificant um, to us uh, because of that wondrous achievement. Uh, <clears throat> and I think, you know, we, we see that uh, at various points in our lives. You know, when we, uh, as we're going through stuff, it seems so difficult, uh, so hard to comprehend that uh, we might wonder, you know, is this really worth it? This is so much to endure. And I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it in the end. And then we reach the end and we look back and go, well, that wasn't so bad. That was nothing. This is, this is so totally worth it. Um, at least, you know, for me, I've, I've had that a couple times. Um, <laughs> school is definitely a big one. I know a lot of, a lot of our youth, um, there's, it's not easy. Uh, and, and to an outsider, it might seem like, you know, they're complaining over nothing that, you know, it's just school. Uh, but there's a lot of pressures that go into that. And yet when you reach the end, when you look back and see all that you have accomplished, it's totally worth it. Uh, maybe not every little thing. Um, you know, I can't say that I use all the math that I was taught uh, going through school, um, but I definitely use more than I thought I would, um, even as a pastor. Um, there, are, there are so many things in life that uh, seem insurmountable, that, that seem impossible to get through, uh, and and yet we are reminded that uh, we are we are filled with God's spirit, that we are we are spirit led people, and that this the spirit of God, uh, this Holy Spirit that we receive, uh, in inspire us inspires us, um, encourages us, strengthens us. Um, you know, often the Holy Spirit is depicted as as a flame, um, and it just kind of you know kindles a, a fire in us so that uh, we have that energy to get through those difficult times. Uh, and as we were reminded in our, our reading this evening, uh, through that process, uh, we are then able to, to look back and go, oh, it was, it was hard. It was definitely not an easy road, but it was so worth it. Uh, and all the, the pain and suffering and, uh, and hard work pales in comparison to the rewards that we will receive. Uh, so uh, in... In these times of concern, uh, I encourage you uh, not to to lose hope uh, in in our in our faith uh, in our the world around us. I know that can be a, a struggle too. Um, that you know, we see a lot of a lot of pain around us, uh, and yet Scripture also regularly uses the imagery of of labor. You know that we we're, we're going through these these pains, these times of of, of a great difficulty, and and yet we look at um, the birth of a child and the similarities between that, that you have to go through the, the labor pangs uh, in order to receive that, that beautiful bundle of joy. Uh, and, and we receive that as well in life. Uh, and I have a feeling that's what it's going to feel like uh, for us uh, when we are finally all reunited in God's kingdom uh, when uh, we experience God's kingdom here on earth. Um, not just, you know, when we die, uh, but we also get glimpses of that throughout our life. You know, there are times that uh, bring moments of clarity for us that um, that inspires us in, in interesting ways. And we get a glimpse of, of what that feels like, this 
limitless abundance and, and joy uh, with, with our Creator. Um, so I encourage you, um, if you know, reflecting on Scripture is your thing, go ahead and read through this a couple more times. Uh, there's tidbits that always keep popping up you know, as you go through. Um, and I know, you know some of it's kind of uh, maybe not the most uplifting. You know, we might read this and go, well, am I really in the Spirit? Uh, do I have the Spirit of God in me? You know, or, or am I one of those condemned not to experience that? Uh, to which I would say, um, uh, down in f 15 here, you know, when we cry, Abba, Father, um, are we able to do that? Are we able to call out to God? If so, that's the Holy Spirit working in us. Um, so if if you find yourself praying to God, there you go. You're filled with the Spirit. Uh, if you are able, uh, another passage, uh, if you are able to say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, there you go. Um, we cannot make a claim like that uh, if if we aren't spirit filled, so, um, and not just with our words too, but uh, with our actions. Um, there are times that you know we are called to to act out in in compassion for others, um, to to do things that you know from a, a selfish point of view doesn't make sense, and um, we see that a lot in in today's world um, that. We have these opportunities to uh, to uplift one another, to uh, to hold each other up, and um, and what a, a great reminder uh, from Romans this evening that um, in these difficult times, you know, we hold on to one another. Uh, we are we are uh, set ablaze with the Holy Spirit, and that when we do reach. The end when we are able to experience fully God's kingdom on earth, all of this will be just nothing. It will be an insignificant speck compared to the glories that await us. So um, that's all for me. Uh, I wish you well and uh, and hope that uh, you are are doing well in in these times uh, and look forward. To being with you again. So, blessings. Have a great evening.